Well, this episode has started really well. Um, we've decided to come into a practice game, and I've already had my ass handed to me. Uh, <laughs> also, folks who have watched episode one of Chatbot, the screen may look a little bit different now. I do apologise, but the joys of online games and the joys of interviews, we mix things up and we do as we please as we go. The one thing that won't change is I'm going to be shit at all of these games and probably lose every <laughs> single one. Because my guest for this episode is none other than the most talented of lemons that you will ever find in your fruit bowl. Lemon, how are you? I'm good, Schmack, thank you. How are you? I'm not bad. I'm embarrassed that I've already lost the game before we've even started. We just thought this would be a cool screen to start with. There's cards falling everywhere. It's just, it's raining. It rain. and, uh, literally the only form of making it rain I can tolerate these days. Uh, <laughs> the choice of being a Twitch streamer and content creator. It just doesn't happen. Oh, hashtag relatable. Uh, I know, I know. But, in fact, before we go any further, though, um, round of applause. Lemon, Lemon is re-entering the world of full-time employment very, very soon. Thank you. Thank Great. you. So good, exciting. Good news in lockdown. Are you excited? I am. But I'm. it's weird because when I was at the job interview, when they told me about like the stuff of things I was going to do, they were like, do you think this sounds exciting? And I was like, yes, because it's something new I haven't tried before. Because the, <laughs> like, the actual task, I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> You're like, I don't know and I don't care about the job. All right, I'm going to hit play no, again I'm... so people can see our lovely faces. There we go. So do don't worry about starting the game straight away as we go. But you are going to be subjected to the same first question that everyone is going to face on the so far. Now, for those again who have seen episode one will know if you're watching this, we want you to comment and rate Lemon's takeaway of choice. So if you can only order, like if you have carte blanche, order any takeaway you want. What are you ordering? Are you ordering, you know, uh, an Indian, Chinese, pizza, Korean? What are you ordering? But not just that, we want to know your exact order. So not just where you're ordering from, not the place, obviously, not sort of cuisine, but exactly what food you're ordering. Okay. <clears throat> can, can I... I I'll find it on my phone. <laughs> if you have proof to back up or evidence to back up, you feel free. Bring it to the no, table. No, no, so, so like I can be as accurate as possible because I found... So I was, I was house-sitting for my friend. Mm -hmm. I was cat-sitting. And I was like, I'm going to order a takeout. And I found something that was like really, really good. And now I just crave that constantly. <laughs> we should add, by the way, folks, Lemon will have possibly some alternative options because you, you're not UK based, are you, Lemon? I'm very not UK based. I sit smack down in the middle of Copenhagen. Yeah, <laughs> smack down in the middle smack of Copenhagen. That's... <laughs> oh, God, it's I'm so funny. funny. <laughs> it's funny because it fits. <laughs> I oh, would yeah. choose to order bell buns. Or it's just called bao. I think bao also means buns, so it's like a... Okay. Um, do it. Should I do advertisement for the restaurant? <laughs> <laughs> nah, we'll, they, they don't sponsor Sorry, us yet. <laughs> no, I don't think they will. Um, so bao are these, like, Chinese, like, buns with Ooh. filling in them. Okay. And they're like, you know, it's, it's two free bites in one bun. Yeah. So you order buns of different, but they're so good. And you can get these with like slow roasted pork with like, oh. so here it says like there's pickled veggies, peanuts and cilantro in them. Or you can get them with barbecue sliced beef with onion, sesame seeds and with fried chicken and <laughs> stuff like that. Like, so order a bunch of different of those. I would do that because that's delicious. I need, I need to get a bowl. Not for the food, but to catch the drool that is currently falling out of my face. <laughs> I've just eaten all of the meat for breakfast. <laughs> this is yeah. making me hungry. Oh, they have one with tornado. So what what would be your what would be your main choice then of filling for said bun? Ah uh. <laughs> <laughs> Pressure on the spot. <laughs> duck or pork. Well okay. I think like the dork the duck and uh, the dork. <laughs> the dork. <laughs> I think the dork is currently saying recording an interview. <laughs> My English is failing me. <laughs> no, it's just a combination of the two. You have duck and pork. Yeah. <laughs> we have dork. Um, 
it's like a particular time of um, holiday is it in America where they have like um, I think it might be at Thanksgiving where they have like turkey and like stuffed with chicken. You know, we do like a three bird roast. Oh, the the so turkey, you know. Yeah, oh. turkin or something, da turkin or some little thing like that. But yeah, that where they do the th- we'll just do the same. We'll have dark in the book. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. I like it. I like it. Well, folks, if you are watching this, please comment down below. We want a rating out of 10 for Lemon's takeaway of choice. Can you hear that I live in a vegan household? <laughs> are you, yes, you live within a vegan household, but that does not mean you have to follow said vegan rules, do you? Of not, yourself? No, no, no. Like, I can eat whatever I want, and I do, but all shared meals, we eat together five times a week. All shared meals are, are vegan. Okay. Sometimes vegetarian because we do like cheese, but we try to. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. It's like sometimes, yeah, cheese. It's <laughs> cheese wins. I think yeah. you know something. Cheese is the overriding thing for a lot of people with these um, varied diets. A mm-hmm. lot of people say, like you know, when they go vegan or whatever, they don't miss meat. They don't miss any of that. It's like cheese. Cheese is the thing. <laughs> yeah, because like. Because obviously all the dishes we do are um, meat-free and they're good on their own. And if you have, you can find very good substitutes for different milks and yeah. cream, stuff like that. But vegan cheese is shit. I'm really sorry <laughs> to say, but it is. There's a, there are a few that are good for something. Like you can find good vegan cheese that are good like melted so on a pizza yes but it's true. not as good as, it's not as good as real cheese and you can't find substitutes for parmesan really and stuff like yeah. this like cheese i i have obviously i'm some viewers out there might not know i'm lactose intolerant so i do have to find a lot of dairy free alternatives to cheese not by choice but basically by the, the sort of me trying not to murder my family because uh, <laughs> they have to suffer the consequences if i do but, Should I actually start playing? I'm just. I'm yeah, playing. yeah. Feel free. We're just. We're gonna click. By the way, for folks, if you haven't guessed already, we're playing Uno. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> for those who hadn't seen the multitude of cards falling through the screen earlier, um, I don't know why, because you can't listen to this as an audio version. This is available as video only. I didn't see the point. Someone says to me, "Are you gonna release an audio version of this game?" I'm like, "Why? Why would I release an audio version of a of a, a an interview that is based around playing games? I kind of don't see the point in that." <laughs> Like, I played a red seven. <laughs> <laughs> They'll give commentary the entire time as we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have put down this card. Uh, oh, okay. Now we're getting the. Uh, now, again, dur- during the warm up game, I, uh, Lemon did this twice. I challenged both times and lost. <laughs> Which probably explains a lot about why I lost the game. So, do I want to. Re- uh, you know, so now screw- I- ah! God damn it! <laughs> why do I do these things? I, I thought you'd known by now that I'm a very honest person. I'm like, no, uh, I do appreciate that you are an honest person, but I've also played Among Us with you, where you know you've killed me. So, <laughs> I, <laughs> actually, I just found uh, I made a drawing for Moose about how Moose and I play uh, Among Us together, and I just found it out because I was about to like get what's it called, like curl it up. I was like, no, no, no. So it's right here next to me. Ooh. Well, for those who uh, are unaware of what we do over on the streams as well, obviously. We, we stream four days a week on twitch.tv. You see the link at the bottom. But Lemon has been a big part of what we do over there. And it has, in fact, created one of the most popular uh, merch items we've had ever. With a ham- that. Now, look. That started as just a small sketch on a post-it note. <laughs> and somehow became one of the most iconic images to go on our channel. How, like, how long did that take you to do? Like, this one I actually did after the one I did for you. Yeah. So, I think the one I did for you took seven, maybe ten minutes. And this one took (laughs) half the amount, because it's quicker to draw by hand. It's just, (laughs) like, honestly, for instinctive talent, just creating something on the spot, you've got a knack for it that I think a lot of people would be jealous of. What? How long have you been like doing these kind of things for? I like Just these little sketches. Do you plan things beforehand or is it just a, I have an idea, I'm going to draw said idea? <clears throat> Very much the last thing. I, I've obviously been drawing my entire life. More mm. or less. Um, but I, I tend to think in images in a very, very weird way because I'm not a cartoonist. I don't draw cartoons. Mm-hmm. But when people say stuff, I can like picture in my mind, like, how would this work as a drawing? Yeah. 
And sometimes I'm like, I'm just going to do it now. Hmm. <laughs> and other times I plan it in my little, I have a book with a list of like things I can, can do one day <laughs> if I'm bored. Uh, yeah, that's very much how it works. Did, so I mean, is it something that you've like studied as well in the past? Obviously a lot of people go to art school. A lot of people will spend all of their time studying, learning. Is this something that you've done or is it just that literally you've always been able to do and everything else is self-taught? It's mostly self-taught. Uh, I did have some Saturday classes when I was young that focused on drawing. Mm -hmm. Can't remember any of it. Uh, <laughs> Great lessons. Stuck with me forever. <laughs> no, I think what I do remember about those days was I was really annoyed that it was a Saturday, not because it was my day off, but because I couldn't watch Pokemon in the morning because I had to leave. <laughs> Forced away from the cartoons. Damn it! Yeah, yeah. Saturday morning cartoons. Um, but I did go to art school, um, but not for not for graphic design or hmm. art and any of that thing. I went. <clears throat> I used to study industrial design at the Royal Danes Academy of Fine Arts School of Design, which is a very long name for a school. <laughs> uh, was, was even part of the class Britain. having to come up with things that would actually shorten that name. <laughs> no, because there's a shorter name. It's called K A D K in Danish. Oh, okay. Because um, the name again in Danish is even longer, <laughs> and it's just like if you put it on your resume, it just takes up so much space. <laughs> I know. It's just like you've got two pages of what is all of this. This is me just telling you what I've studied. Yeah. What you've studied, nowhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> God. Uh, and I was there for for three semesters. I hmm. dropped out just before. Uh, just before my th third semester exams because I was miserable. And I took some time off to like start being happy again. And then I started studying jewelry design at Kia Copenhagen School of Design and Technology. Yeah, okay. Where I graduated from about a month ago, two months ago. I was going to say it was about two months ago now, isn't it? <laughs> what is time? <laughs> what is time? Baby, don't Baby, hurt don't me. Hurt me. <laughs> You have open ah ah ah. D distraction techniques. Ah, son of a mongoose! <laughs> You've been holding on to that, ready to punish me. I don't like it. Um, okay, fine. Yeah, I'll take two cards. So listen, obviously, like you've said, you're like smack dab in the middle down Copenhagen, mm -hmm. where your location now. But that's not always been home, has it? No. You're you're quite well travelled. I am. <laughs> Yeah, I would say so. I mean, well, let me say you're quite well learned because obviously for someone based there, your English is insanely good. Um, Thank you. We have a mutual friend uh, in Stevel as well, obviously, who, who brought you into our little smackhead corporation. I stole his friends. <laughs> <laughs> I know, you have replaced the Stevel with an R group. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so for sort of what what have you done with your time what has been sort of your your life guide your life experience up to this point what has led you to where you are just now i ended in copenhagen by accident actually <laughs> how the best things do yeah so i'm from uh, the very very well famous <laughs> danish town of Vejle. yes which you've of course all heard about uh no, nobody has <laughs> I think it's like the what ninth or tenth biggest city in Denmark. It's like fifty-five thousand, so it tells you something about the size, I guess, of things there. Uh, yeah, um, and so Vejle is in the other end of the country, and it's close to the second biggest city in mm. Denmark, which is a big university city. And I always wanted to go there, but there was never anything in that city that I wanted to study. Mm -hmm. Um. So when I found out that design could maybe be a thing, I looked at different schools where I could go to prepare to get into design school because getting into design school is wicked hard. Yeah, I can imagine. Um, I think the Royal Dance Academy takes in like less than is six or eight percent of all applicants. Jeepers. Yeah. Uh, so originally I applied for the other design school we have here in Denmark, which mm. is... 30 40 kilometers from my hometown so it's like if i get in i can just you know i don't have to go that far everything be be fine hmm. uh, 
Ah, no place for you. Ah, son of a mongoose. And, um, yeah, I want to go there, but for whatever reason, I got into Copenhagen. <laughs> and you've been stuck there. <laughs> yeah, but it was, it's, it's a happy accident. Yeah. Like, this is the best thing that could happen, I think. So obviously you've mentioned, um, you know, uh, work is slowly returning into your life again now, but outside of work and drawing and general um, sort of artistic design kind of stuff, what what else occupies your time when you're allowed outside, of course? <laughs> uh, so roller derby, that is, uh, you know, that is where this community really started to. Yeah. That's it's a fair point. Uh, we actually have derby practice tomorrow because we we are allowed to do sports outside. Mm -hmm. No contact though. Yeah. Uh, fit twenty five people, but we can only be five people together before and after practice. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like practice is done. Split up. Everyone run <laughs> or yeah. skate. Exactly. It's, it's very weird. Um, yeah, I'm a, I am looking forward to it. We haven't been able to get back to practice up here, and my um, my team I play for is like a three hour drive to get to <laughs> from where I live. I, <laughs> I decided that playing in a team that in my home city was just clearly not a good idea. So let's travel elsewhere to do it. But how how excited are you to get back to it? Have you still been staying in contact with um, with your pals within your team during all of this? Has there been a lot of communication still between you all? Or I I honestly I haven't. Pl I haven't talked that much to the skaters, mm -hmm. but the officials are my my heart. Like, yeah. I I think I would still have stayed in Derby even if I didn't start to officiate. Mm -hmm. But I'm not sure I would have been that invested in Derby if yeah. I didn't start officiating. Uh, so I talk to them on a regular basis, mm -hmm. and I meet up with them sometimes, go for walks, stuff like that. Yeah. Um. But that's also because like. I started Derby in f fall of or autumn of <laughs> eighteen. <laughs> Get my pressure on. <laughs> <laughs> we got you. We got you. And oh yeah, um, and I still haven't passed minimum skill test. I know it's not a thing anymore, but yeah. it stopped being a thing, and then this pandemic stuff happened and stuff. Uh, <laughs> As bad as it sounds, I was part of the group who uh, made that decision. <laughs> no, I'm really happy with the minimum skill test. It's not a thing anymore. Yeah. I do understand why you need skaters to be at a certain level to skate safely. But you're not a better skater because you can go 27 laps in five minutes. No, exactly. And that's the only thing I haven't been able to do yet. I'm at 25. Mm -hmm. But it also means that I've... I'm a part of the team in a really weird way because everybody in Copenhagen. Yeah. Not everybody in Copenhagen, but everybody in Copenhagen. <laughs> Everyone. <laughs> knows me. Uh, they all know me and uh, I've done a lot of stuff with them, but I've never played hmm. for the team. I've always been with the advanced skaters as an official. Yeah. And the basic teams are so nice people, but there's also a lot of in and out. So... The officials are the are the glue for me. Keep everything together. I I went. Um, you know, I started within roller derby as an announcer, then became an official, mm -hmm. then moved into the skating side of things. So I've kind of been all all through the uh, <laughs> the spectrum of ways to play the game. Um, and you know something, the officials are possibly one of the most unique group of individuals i think i've ever come across within within sports as a whole to be honest because yeah. roller derby officials are very much um they are they are a gang of zebras and they and obviously used to be flamingos but thankfully they did away with all the pink coloring for for a lot of people pink is kind of my yeah. thing still with a hat but you know and i am um, i like certain shades of pink mm. but not on me and i'm <laughs> But it's literally one of the things like pink on me makes me uncomfortable. Mm. And it's hard to explain, but it does. So I'm very happy that I didn't start until. I just hide behind. It looks red, but it is pink, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like, this, is, this is a colorful outfit for me because there's white in. <laughs> <laughs> 
So I'm always dressed to officiate. I must be looking like a rainbow to you just now. God. <laughs> I've got yellow. Look, see, I specifically wore something that has yellow. But actually, like, that looks like something that could be from Copenhagen Roller Derby because our colours are black and gold, which black is black and gold. Best team colours ever, I'm sorry to say. Uh, yeah, I can't argue with that. Ours are blue and orange, so I'm saying nothing. <laughs> white, blue, white, blue, and orange. Yeah, it's not good. White, white, blue and orange. white. Add in the extra H. That's my aggressive Scottishness coming out again. <laughs> this this was an interesting revelation that was made to me beforehand by Lemon, in that in discussions amongst friends, I'm not described as Scottish. I am aggressively Scottish, apparently, which is quite nice. I like that. I quite like that as an appropriate little uh, little pass through. But, um, so what led to you getting involved in roller derby? How did you get started within it? Because it's quite a niche sport to uh, to even mm-hmm. like find a way into, really, isn't it? Yeah, my my very good friends, old girlfriend, used to play. Mm-hmm. They were my upstairs neighbor at that point, so they were going to a game. Ask if I wanted to join. Okay, I said sure. I'd heard about derby before, mm-hmm. and I like sort of got the gist of what it was about but i i had never seen a game and i just fell in love with you know the atmosphere yeah because it was it was just it was happy people and it was people i could relate to and there was a glitter booth and it was just yeah and it was just amazing and also it's the first time I've seen a sport and looked at the people doing it. Woohoo! <laughs> hey! Speaking of winning at sports. <laughs> yeah. It's the first time I've seen people play a sport where I looked at them and, and thought, like, I could do that. Not because it looked easy in any way, but because I could see myself actually doing that. Yeah. Which is very weird because I've never really skated before. I've never really done sports. But there was something about it where I was like, I could see myself do that. So I did that. <laughs> yeah, it's it's very much something that I think it is. It's almost like I've called it before the marmite of sports. You know, people either love it or they hate it. It's kind of I don't like marmite. Though. Well, this is it. But that, but that's with roller derby. There's there's very much not a, a middle ground. There's not a yeah, it's okay. You know, I can watch it every yeah. so often or not. It's not a it's not a casual sport nope. in any sense of the word. It's not something that you can just have a casual interest in i don't think it becomes and to be fair i think that's why it leads to a lot of burnout for a lot of people as well within it because it becomes this all-encompassing thing that you are working you know when it first started i heard a great analogy that people used to play roller derby to get fit now people get fit to play roller derby Mm -hmm. and they you know I, i always think that's quite a good way of describing it and how it's changed over over the years um, and like you say, things like there being no minimum skills requirements and all that, there have been a lot of changes within the sport now. How do you feel about roller derby and where it is now compared to where it was when you first got involved? I think it's hard to answer because derby has been cancelled for so long for me. Yeah. Uh, so a year ago, I was in Finland. Mm-hmm. Uh, I went there as an exchange student. And I was planning, I brought my skates and everything. I was planning on trying to skate with the local team, but I found out that the local team was sort of closed down. So they skated in the next like little town over and I was welcome to come there, but it was like, oh, I just arrived in the country. I don't want to do that now. And then of course COVID happened. So I don't know, for for me, Derby is almost like a, what is Derby even yeah. these days? Um, but I'm, I mean, Copenhagen has had some, some hard times mm-hmm. even before I left, but I'm excited to see what Derby can become yeah. again. I think that's the important thing. Yeah, I mean, there's going to be a lot of changes to, to not just sports, but like working life to everything when it comes to, you know, this, this pandemic, COVID. I don't want to mm-hmm. say ending because... I don't think COVID as a thing will ever end, if I'm honest. I think it's going to yeah. become like the flu. It's always going to be there. We're just going to learn to to manage it and live with it, which is what we're in the process of learning to do now. But how has how have you found, like excluding the sport and the work aspect of it, how has, how has COVID, the pandemic, lockdown, everything where you are impacted you? How have you found life during this past year? Not as bad as a lot of other people. Mm-hmm. Um, when... 
the lockdown, everything happened again. I was in Finland and everybody was like, are you okay? And people were worried about me, but I was fine. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Because (coughs) when you go on exchange, you (coughs) sign sign up for being away from your friends and your family for a long time. And you know, you can't see them. So the fact that I was in uh, Finland smashed so quickly it didn't really change a lot of things because I never really got a a daily routine before the lockdown everything happened Mm -hmm. so it was just like oh now this is how my life looks and then I got to go home and it was in the summer and you were sort of allowed to do things and suddenly I could see my friends and everything was great Uh, I think the hardest part about it for me was that I had to write my bachelor during a pandemic yeah. Which meant that we couldn't go to school. I couldn't use the equipment at school, which trying to do a project about laser cut jewelry is very hard when you can't find your laser cutter. Yes. <laughs> you couldn't meet with your with your counselor or your teachers in mm. like real life. Everything had to be video. And the thing was we couldn't even go to a library to meet and write because you couldn't go to libraries. We couldn't go to a cafe. We could only sit at home or be like two people at each other's house. Yeah. And that just, that sucked. Like, writing a bachelor is hard. Writing a bachelor during a global pandemic fucking sucks. <laughs> <sighs> I can imagine. What what sort of things have you found have helped you get through it, though? Like, has it been, um, obviously, our first guest, um, there was a lot of gaming. They found that specific games that had come out were quite uh, mm-hmm. good for helping them through things. What's What's helped you as a person get through all of this so far? Community? Mm-hmm. Um, when lockdown happened last year, I had just come home from playing a LARP called Colors of Wizardry in Poland. Mm -hmm. And everybody there was affected by it as well. I think we have at least 20 people who was at the game who got tested positive for COVID. And just a lot of other people being like, I can't get tested, but I probably had it because we were hugging a lot. Because we know COVID was a thing, but it's like... It's probably going to be over, and like within a week, you're yeah. just shut down. It was bad timing. Um, so we played a lot of like games online, doing Jackbox games online and yeah. stuff like that. And having people to talk to really helps. Mm-hmm. And then getting home and being able to see my friends and just. Like I spend most of my time online anyway, yeah. but having a community online really helps. Yeah, I think this community helps. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say our obviously our little online community that we have within the um, the group of us who you, you know we all started playing Among Us together, and then we slowly spawned out into our own little Discord community, and we do everything else that way. I think it's helped. It's helped me anyway, because mm-hmm. I. I personally have my own uh, mental health issues as as everyone does within the world and I think community has made a massive difference in that. How how would you say your own sort of mental health has, has managed throughout all of this? Have you been able to keep yourself quite positive, quite upbeat going through or have you have you had, you know, those difficult days that I'm sure we all have over time? <clears throat> of course it's been difficult days, but I feel mm-hmm. like in, in the big one I've been I've been fine. Yeah. Uh, the hardest part for me was writing the bachelor yeah and doing that and <laughs> i was out for a walk with my friend um and i told her that if i didn't pass my bachelor i was not sure i was gonna try again mm-hmm. and she was like yes you are <laughs> <laughs> you have no choice do as you're told yeah. <laughs> no but literally and she um Oh God, I'm running out of battery. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. We don't have too much long to go. Don't worry. We've got, can it last uh, another five, 10 minutes? I've, hopefully it's a 12%. I'll be fine. We'll be okay. That, that could, gonna... That'll be an interesting way to wrap up the interview as Lemon just cuts off. <laughs> no, I, can, I can just fetch my charger anyways. Yeah. Well, whatever works for you. Don't worry. We'll be okay. Uh, yeah. Um, but yeah, when, when I came back after New Year's and Christmas, I went to my friend's house and she basically made me a plan like this is what you're gonna do to finish your bachelor yeah uh, and I did it <laughs> you did you did you passed and you graduated everything yeah. went well 
and I didn't cry too much about it. <laughs> um, and I spent a lot of time just after graduating, just like trying to become like a person again. Yeah, decompress. But after from that, like... yeah. But after that, I feel like I've I've been fine. Yeah, I I must admit within our within our little group that we have, and I know everyone has their own little groups. But obviously, I only know um, how we communicate in amongst with each other. Uh, there has been a lot of there hasn't been much in the way of um, like negative vibes through it all. I think everything. Oh there's always someone posting something in there every single day that is that is positive in some way shape or form whether yeah. it be a meme that gives everyone a laugh um we've done you know would you rather questions for a week or two which have posed some random uh, theories to people um the pet photos that get posted up every so often just to see how everyone's cute little animals are getting on it's mm-hmm. we've always managed to find a way to make at least one other person within the group smile yeah. And it's not it's like it's not like it's the same people doing it over and over again either. Um I remember when you posted up that you'd graduated, everyone was over the moon. When you posted up that you had your job, everyone was over the moon. Yeah. And everyone comes back with their own for um Squeak within the community started streaming randomly and everyone's like, What on earth is going on here? Let's let's throw things at Squeak. Oh, he's posted cats. Dan starts doing YouTube videos. Z just pops up every so often and speaks and everyone cheers up. You know, it's it's a yeah. great little community that we have in there. And I think that is something, I don't know about you, I would like your opinion on it. That's something I would recommend to everyone to try and to either find and become a part of or to create their own and mm. really, really grab onto. What do you think? Definitely. And because I, I feel like within the community, it's like, if this is the right word, it's reinforcing itself mm-hmm. because whenever something happens that I'm really happy about, I want to share it with you in the hopes that it will also make you happy. And because I know that the people within the community supports me, Mm -hmm. and I hope that if I then go support them and I'm happy for other people, that they want to share more and it becomes like this thing. Because it's not forced, which I'm really surprised about. It's it's so genuine. Yeah. It's really nice people. It is. It's a ridiculously positive group. Um, I mean, the link to the Discord will be in the description of this video when people go in. But we warn you now, it is very easy to click on the link and join the group. It takes a lot for you to be accepted into the family and welcomed as another part of us. It does. You have to be a very unique individual. It's And you know something? There's a reason... Make us sound very nice, though. Well, do you know what I mean? It's What gets me is there's so many of these Discord communities that have like thousands of members in them. And yeah. you you still only see like the same three, four, five faces commenting, talking, doing whatever, and it's it kind of it kind of defeats the purpose of what these things are supposed to be for me. You know, mm. I don't get it. I really don't get it. Oh, I got my screen's lagging like mad now. What on earth did it do there? Why is my recording starting to lag? I don't know. Neither do I. Oh, never mind. It's balanced itself out. There we go. Um, it's done it. Ah! Typical and I don't get a win. Razor, razor, razor. Where were we? Yes, Discord communities. Communities are crazy and we like our one. So yes, it is good fun to come into. So what's, what does the future look like for Lemon? Uh, Vogue. A 9, <laughs> a nine okay. to 5 job in the Ministry of Finance? <laughs> it's uh, yeah, it's one way to look into it, I suppose. Um, I, I, I don't know. Yeah. What my life will look like. Uh, I hope for things to be somewhat not normalized because I don't think I think normal is dead. There will be a new normal, but for mm-hmm. things to be more stable again. Because mm-hmm. I want to go. Because you asked me before what I what I did besides working and drawing. Yeah. And I did roller derby and we talked about that. But I'm also a scout. I've been a scout for 20 years. Yes. Again, my lovely uniform here. Yeah, <laughs> um, we have five different scout organizations in Denmark. None of them have a red uniform. <laughs> <laughs> but I have red one. Um, yes. Uh, I love you, Lemon. And I LARP a lot. I used to LARP. Mm-hmm. Uh, I used to go like around four times a year, but, yeah. but look at what has happened now. 
<laughs> I was such a downsider. I used to do it all, but look what has happened now. <laughs> I, I actually, I actually, I played an online live last Sunday, mm. and it was amazing, and everybody was crying, and I love Type Two fun, uh, and I really wanted to do more of that. Yeah. <laughs> Have you got like a set group that you've been LARPing with over time, or? I sort of have two communities because uh, my live journey started at Cults of Wistry, mm -hmm. which we play in Poland and a castle called Choha. Mm -hmm. And that's an, a big international community, funny enough. Uh, and then I have my group here in Denmark. We, it's also an international lab we play because it is in English, but we're all Danes. <laughs> Just speak English with each other when we play. <laughs> My character is like aggressively Irish, which is probably also not very appropriate. <laughs> but it's a thing. I mean, is there any other way to be? Apparently, I'm aggressively Scottish. It's the only yeah. way to be a particular sort of UK based nationality. Just go, <laughs> just be aggressive with it and hope it works. I will just fetch my charger really quick because my computer has started to like laugh. <laughs> <laughs> go for it. You do that. I'm going to sit here and plan my next move. Yes. Except it's my turn, so I'm just gonna. I know I'm, play I'm, that. I'm plotting. And then you can contemplate. I'm plotting and contemplating. <laughs> <Lemon runs away. laughs> Don't forget, folks, you can actually check in the link description down below in this video a link to um, find out all of Lemon's uh, images and sketches, drawings, all sorts at their uh, social media page on Instagram. And if you wish to join the Discord and join in a lot of the conversations that we have with our little our little family, I don't want to call it a community because we're all awesome human beings, but uh, yeah, you can do so again at the link down below. And you can click on twitch.tv slash smack232 and join us over there for all the live fun times too. Did you say nice things about me while that was going? Of course, I directed everyone to your Instagram page so they can Ooh. all go like and comment on your images, you see. That would be nice. Indeed. Indeed. My newest drawing is about, is actually a drawing of my character from the library plate last Sunday. Uh, okay, well, there you go, folks. Head on over to it, uh, Instagram.com slash Lemon in Korean, and yes. like, hit the little hearts all the time. No, in fact, only hit it once, because if you hit it more than once, it unlikes it. <laughs> I learned that the hard way. Yeah, just everything, everything in even numbers. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. <laughs> the OCD brain will thank you. Okay. Mine will go anyway. Okay, okay, we're getting close. We're getting close. We're almost to. Well, listen. Obviously, we let's see. We try and record these things for around sort of half an hour, forty-five minutes. So we are we are drawing to a close with our time as we go as well. We've covered no! some other. I know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We we. You know, but the plus point is because we have so much we can go to. It means you get invited back for part two. Ooh. You see, planning ahead. This is the content creator who goes, I may struggle to come up with other people who want to do this. I need a part two from all those who've agreed so far. <laughs> <laughs> is there anyone that you, not necessarily from our community, but anyone that you would like to see go through this process to sit, play a game with me, and just be asked random questions so we can find out a little bit more about their life as we go through? There is one, and it is one from our community. So if you want me to pick something more creative, I can also do I'll that. I'll tell you what, you get two choices then. You get one within the community and one out with. Okay. And it can be I... as loud and leery as you want. You can ask me to interview like Elton John if you want. I don't even care. I can try it. Ooh. It can literally be anyone. No, I, I'm i really looking forward to the episode with Moosh. Okay. Uh, I don't like... I like Moosh. <laughs> That's not a bad thing, don't worry. It's not. It's, you don't have to say that with a tinge of regret. It's okay to like Moosh. Well, it's not regret, it's more like, it sounds weird. Like, I like Moosh. Like, how, how creepy is that? I hate Moosh. I like Moosh. Hey, business yeah, cat. And Moosh is really nice and has such a nice voice and is always so, like, calm and polite and I really like that. Yeah. I mean, I'll need to turn the volume up about an extra 200% to pick up his nice quiet tones in the background, but yes. Yeah, and you have to stop shouting. It's going to be a weird episode. I don't know how to do that. <laughs> I know. I have no idea how to not be loud. It's just, it's like a default setting for me. I've turned my own microphone down so much so it doesn't sound like I'm shouting too much on the recording at least, which is always nice. So okay, we'll get Mooshes from the community. We do have uh, many folks within the community who we're going to interview. There will be one coming with Dan Siles. There will be one coming with Moosh. We have Drago still lined up as well. There's going to be loads coming. The only person not in the community who I'm not interviewing is my son. Because, dear God, no one needs that in their life. 
I have to speak to him often enough. I'm not going to torture everyone else by doing it. If you watch his streams, he is one of the most creative individuals with editing videos. For a kid as young as he is to be as good as he is at editing drives me mad. But at the same time, he does not know how to talk. <laughs> he is the opposite of his father and sits in silence the entire time. It's so frustrating. Um, so we have Moose from within the community, but who out with them? Who do you think would be good to like sit and go through this kind of stupid, chaotic nonsense? From, like, anyone. Anyone at all. Whether, whether or not you want to see them suffer by going through this, or whether or not it's someone you want to learn more about. <laughs> Ah, oh, it's hard. Under pressure. I. When would this come out? How many spoilers can I do? Uh, you don't. You can do as many spoilers as you want. I mean, this is coming out the second of April. This one will be launched. Okay. Because a, a Scottish drag queen just won a Drag Race UK. <laughs> so, like, how cool would it be if you did this with Lauren Cheney? Lawrence Cheney. Lawrence Cheney. Lawrence Cheney. Alright, I'll add that to the list, by the way, but... Uh, I don't know why I do the by the way, but that's Glaswegian, which is nothing like where I'm from at all. I'm three and a bit hours away from that. <laughs> right, okay, that will be uh, added to the list. Hang on. There we go. Scottish Drag Race winner. Okay. Because, believe it or not, there will actually be proof. There is going to be uh, an episode or a highlights clip of me actually contacting all these random people who people have suggested. Not within <laughs> the community, because that's that's just going to end badly. But there will be a YouTube video coming of me typing out messages to all of these folk and getting in touch with them to ask if they'll come on this. But I want at least like three or four episodes recorded so I can go to them and go, look, this is the things we're doing. This is the person who has asked you to come on. Learn. <laughs> so, yeah, that, that that should be interesting. At least I'll throw my personality out there to everyone. I might be shaving it rid of the white hairs, admittedly. But there we go. go on that. I also have a few. I don't know if... I think... Yeah, yeah this one. Very yeah. white. Yeah, I like the fact that you said this one. No, no, no. I, like, there's a lot in there. Yeah, I know. But trade. Look at this. They're everywhere. It's like literally half my chin. But you're also a few years. Not that much. But uh, a few years I have I have a few years on most people. I am the grandfather. I've given up on being the dad of our group, and I am now the grandfather of our group. <laughs> I've what accepted am, my fate very quickly. What am I then? Because in the in the so the the officials of Copenhagen World we have a book club. Okay. It, it's called book club. We don't read books. We eat cake. My kind of club. <laughs> First rule of book club. Talk about book club. <laughs> first, I thought the first rule would be bring a kick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and in that group, I am known as sometimes the makina, which is Korean for being the youngest person in the group. Okay. I don't know if I'm actually it's, yeah. it's the youngest, but it's my title as being I see, the makina. You couldn't have that within our group, because obviously no. that goes to my teenage son. Yeah. <laughs> when he turns up and actually speaks. Um I think you would be the cool international aunt. But, but see, okay, the thing is, <laughs> you said that before, like me being the cool international, but the thing was being the cool international and being Danish, it's a bit like saying, we're going to make a spicy dish with salt. <laughs> it's like the least exciting <laughs> in the world. I'm Danish, there's nothing exotic <laughs> Danish. This is why we say international instead of exotic. We don't go for exotic now. We just go international. Oh. I love that trying to make something spicy with salt. It's like buying, like coming home, like I bought this new exciting vegetable. What is it? Potato. What do you want me to do? <laughs> the irony is you couldn't have sounded any saltier coming out with it as well. Uh, for goodness sake. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not so I'm not crying, you're crying. I am, I admit I am. <laughs> oh, right, timestamp 44 minutes. That's the clip for this episode. <laughs> I was like, look how red my face is now. Imagine your, your head. I'm sitting in a small room with nothing but a boiler beside me. I couldn't be warmer as it was. You've just added to it. Oh, dear God. I'm uh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Oh no, that's true. <laughs> Make something spicy and adding salt. <laughs> oh, that's genius. I love that. 
<laughs> I can't stream today now. I can't. Nothing's going to top that for the day. That has completely ruined my streaming plans for the rest of the day. It has been topped. You have won the internet for the afternoon. Can I get oh, a bad? Can I get a bad? Yeah, I, I do actually have a um, you've won the internet for today meme that I usually send to people on these occasions. I will dig one. I'll find it for you. You have won the internet for the day. Oh, goodness me. Right, we are, I'm not ending this until this game is done. I don't care how long no. this game takes. We're going to see it out. Although, at this rate, it may not be very long. Uh, <laughs> oh that was a terrible thing to do. Moosh -ha -ha -ha. So, yeah, I think they're... Um, obviously, the interview with Moosh is going to be good fun. Um, who, who do you think is going to be the most chaotic person out of our community when it comes to me doing an interview? Like, unless I was interviewing myself, of course. Uh, I think it's, like, somewhere between... Draco and Dan. Yeah. <laughs> also because it's people you, you seem to know very well, which always makes it spiral. Yeah. Do you know what gets me is I don't know any of them better than I know anyone else within the group. I know you all pretty much equally. It's just there's something about those people that make it even easier for me to wind up. <laughs> and we all know I love to troll the living daylights out of you all when mm. it comes to playing games online. I just can't help myself. It is too much fun. <clears throat> but see, the thing about knowing people that I find interesting is I haven't met any of you in person before ever. Yeah. Because I was introduced into the group by Steve. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I always, like, in the beginning, it was very weird because I felt like you all know each other. So when I was just like, yeah, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> but you fit in so easily. That was the thing. You literally slotted in amongst the rest of us because your sense of humour, your your personality and just your overall kindness is something that endeared you to all of us very, very quickly. And I hate to um, click that button and win. Hey! <laughs> so I won the like practice game of Lost Everything. No, no you won another one in the middle as well. So technically, including the first game, it's 2-2. Two -two, which means you will have to come back, whether you like it or not, for... An episode two. Whether you like <laughs> just mixing between mugs. It's the best. It's the only yellow thing I own. And then I, <laughs> I like the fact it almost looks like you're mixing drinks in amongst the game. Oh, yeah, man. it's boring both of them, so it's very boring. <laughs> it's all got warm already. Oh, 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 oh goodness me, that's terrible. Well listen, Levin, thank you very much for, for being on chatbot today. Is there any any words of wisdom or anything positive you would like to impart on the viewers before we depart? Um, I can tell you my favorite fact. Do it. Um, that mango trees can reproduce asexually, so it takes two to tango, but only one to mango. <laughs> <laughs> oh, folks, that's possibly the most positive end we've had so far to anything we've done. Twitches, um, videos, streams, VODs, anything. Two to tango, but one to mango. That's a line that is definitely going on some merch going forward. Uh, <laughs> thank you for the new tagline to it. Folks, if you haven't done so already, please head over to Instagram.com slash Lemon and Korean. The link is down below in the comment section for this video. Give them a like, give them a follow, and be sure to like all of their content that they post because the images are awesome. And I believe there is some new stuff coming soon as well in relation to other people's merchandise, which you may well see. It might even be out by the time this video has come out. If so, links to buy it will be down below. Uh, stay tuned for next week's episode. Of course, these are coming out weekly now, every Friday at 5pm. You will see a brand new episode of Chatbot launched. And Mondays and Wednesdays at 7pm, you will see clips and highlights purely based on the previous week's episodes. Head on over to twitch.tv slash smack232 and give us a follow on there. Come see the chaos. You will find Lemon lurking in the chat as always. <laughs> and you will get to see the likes of Moosh, Dan, <clears throat> Drago, everyone becoming involved. And you may even see us playing Among Us together for sometimes. Rate Lemon's takeaway of choice in the comments down below. 0 to 10. And by the end of this series, we will have a scoreboard of where you've placed everyone as we go. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you again in seven days' time. Mwah! Peace. Peace.